chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of the final of the 2017 Women's World Championship. Anna Muzichuk from Ukraine against Tan Zongi from China. A well rested Anna Muzichuk started the final. She had had to play no tie breaks, and of the 10 games she played in the 5 rounds, she scored 9 points. Tan Zongi had to play three tie breaks in the five rounds, two of which went all the way to the Armageddon game. The final is over four games, plus a possible tie break. Game one was a relatively quiet draw with Anna Mujicuk behind the white pieces. And this video is about game two, played on Anna Mujicuk's 27th birthday. Let's see what happened. White Tan, Black Mujicuk. D4, D5, C4, C6, the Slav defense, Knight F3, Knight F6, Knight C3, E6, and Queen D3, which is a sideline. The most common moves here are E3 and Bishop G5. Muzichuk took on C4, Queen takes b5, queen back to d3, and a6. Black plays the same moves as in the Maran defense of the Slav. And here Tan pushed e4. c5, also the main move in the Maran. And d takes c5. In the main broadcast, Grandmaster Miroshnichenko called this a pensioner move. A safe move, not very exciting. But here Muzichuk paused because it's not so easy. If you take the queen, bishop takes and then take the pawn back, you have to calculate e5. And if you then play knight g4, then knight e4, which is pleasant for white. For example, bishop before check, the king goes to e2, Knight d7 developing, and bishop f4. This must have been one of the variations that Muzichuk has considered. It was looked at in the live broadcast. And Muzichuk must have come to the conclusion that taking on d3 was not the best option. What I showed here is just one of the variations she must have looked at. So instead of taking the queen, Muzichuk took on c5. Tan took on d8, taking black's castling rights away, and bishop d3. Bishop b7 developing, and e5. Here Anna Muzichuk should have played the knight back to d7, keep the knight into play. Maybe she was worried about knight e4, but then she can play knight c6. Yes, after knight takes e5, knight takes e5, she has lost a bishop pair, which is not easy to do for a human. You don't want to give up your bishop pair that easily. But this was the best option for black. Instead, Muzichuk went to g4. And this knight now gets into trouble, as we'll see in the game. Knight e4, logical move. Hitting the bishop. Bishop b4 check. King e2. Without queens on the board, it's not a big problem that white also gives up his castling rights, her castling rights. Knight d7, bishop f4, knight c5, the knights were swapped, and rook h c1. Hitting the bishop, bishop b6, knight g5, threatening to take on f7 with a fork. King protects the pawn, bishop e4. Bishops were swapped, rook hc8, and a very strong move, f3. The only square for the knight is h6, not a very nice square, knight on the rim, and a strong follow up, g4, taking the f5 square away for the knight. The knight is 
Black's problem piece. If that knight was on d5, then there would be no problem at all for Black, but it's not. Muzichuk played that knight to g8. It, she has to try to reroute the knight back into the game. Knight d6, and that is a very strong knight. Rooks were swapped. King d7, giving up the pawn on f7, but there was a threat. The threat was rook c8, hitting the rook and the knight. And if you then take that rook, there is knight c8 with a fork, winning the bishop on b6. So that's why black played king d7 to protect the c8 square. Giving up that pawn on f7, knight e7 at least getting the knight back into the game, bishop e3, bishops were swapped, and knight went to g6. Here Tan could have consolidated her advantage with king e4, and if black then plays rook f8, there's knight g5, and after rook f4 check you simply go back to e3. Black cannot take the pawn on e5, because then the rook will be hanging. Here white has very good winning chances. Instead Tan played h4, and here Muzichuk missed a big chance. She should have taken that pawn, and then after rook h1, knight g2 check, king f2, King e7, counter attacking the knight. Both knights are hanging. Knight d6, knight f4, then white can take on h7. Knight d3 check, attacking a few pawns. King g3, knight takes the e pawn, that's the most dangerous one. And for example, knight e4. That knight was hanging, king f7, and here black has good drawing chances. So she should have taken on h4, she decided against it, she played rook f8 straight away, but after h5, kicking the knight, knight e7, knight g5, knight d5 check. Of course black is very happy that Finally, that problem knight has arrived on a good square in the center of the board. King f2, a6 kicking the knight, knight e4, rook a8, as there was a threat of knight c5 check, winning the pawn on a6, and a3 from Tan. White is a pawn up. But black at least has been able to activate her knight. A3, strange move. It doesn't really add anything to the position for white. Of course, white wants to push on the king side where she has a pawn majority. But it doesn't ruin anything either. White is not in a hurry, and black was in time trouble here. We have played 33 moves, and she only had a few minutes left to get to move 40. So maybe making a non-move, which a3 really is, is a conscious decision, as it's hard to react in time trouble to a non-move. What would have been more in line with, with the position would be, for example, king g3 and then push the f4 pawn. But a, as I said, a3 doesn't spoil anything. a5 from Muzichuk, knight c3, rook c8, Rook d1, the knight is pinned, king e7, and with knight takes, e takes, town goes into a rook endgame. Of course rook endgames have a tendency to be drawn, but town had judged that this was not one of those positions. She felt she had very good winning chances here. Rook c2 check, king e3, Rook takes and king e4. White is a healthy pawn up 
and his king is a lot more active than black's king. a4, f4, rook b1, king f5, rook b3, hitting the pawn, rook c5, threatening rook c7, so king d7, king g6, b4 from Muzichuk, those pawns were swapped, king f5, King e7, rook c7 check, king f8. White has two defenses in this type of rook endgame. One defense is to try to stay with the king where the danger is, to try and stop the white pawns. Another attempt is, of course, to run with the king to the passed pawn on the A file to try and support that pawn and see if you can sa save the position that way. Well, that second option is not an option here. The king cannot go to the queen side. So that's why she went back to f8. Rook a7, king g8, g5, there comes a pawn push, h takes d5, f takes d5. She could also have taken back with the king, that would have been fine as well. Rook b6, and Tan took immediately on a4 and this was criticized in a live broadcast why do you take on a4 that pawn is not going anywhere and it's a great insurance against stalemate ideas because that's the only thing that black has left is trying to find a stalemate and we see a nice example in the game but Tan was not afraid of stalemates she had seen everything and just took that pawn allowing the g6 push after which we get some stillmate motives. H takes g6, rook b1, rook a8 check, king d7, rook a7 check, king back, and now Tan had calculated that g7 wins. She's three pawns up, and Anna Muzichuk's only hope is still mate. Rook f1 check, king g6, and now the king is still mated, the black king, so white has to be careful. Rook a1, and that rook cannot be taken because of still mate, so rook f7. And after this move, Anna Muzichuk resigned. She saw that the still mate traps do not work. Let's have a look. Why not? You could play rook a6 check and then rook f6 and then rook e6. And again, you cannot take that rook because, it's still, because of stalemate. But you can easily get out of that by playing king h6. And now you threaten to take the rook because it's not stalemate anymore. So, for example, rook e8, then you push the e pawn, rook a8, e7, and rook e8, and now it's mate in two. Rook f8 check, rook takes, and e takes, f8, queen, checkmate. So, first blood for Tan Zonggi, and this is what she had to say after the game. I was satisfied with the opening result of game 1. I was not very well prepared for the opening of game 2, but I was able to avoid Anna's home preparation. After knight takes f7 winning a pawn, I was much better, also because Muzichuk was in time trouble. I took the pawn on a4 quickly and allowed g6. I'm winning anyway, so I can take it. So it's clear that Tan had seen that the stillmate traps did not work. This win won't influence me much. I will do my best in the next two games. So as I said, first blood to Tan. After two games, she leads one and a half against a half. And game three will be played with Muzichuk behind the white pieces. And you feel that she'll have to come up with something special. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. And I'm looking forward to your comments. 
You also may want to check out my Chess 2 Progress channel. I have series there on tactics, on endgames, on classics, and also analyzing games from viewers. This is Rick from Chess 2 Impress. Thank you very much for watching.